guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, this is JR29, this is a uh, 1996 Ford Thunderbird stock car. This is actually a car that we restored before we had JR51, and then uh, once we found JR51, we actually had to sell this one, unfortunately, to fund the res restoration of 51. Um, but due to some uh, unfore uh, unforeseen circumstances with the current owner and some issues he was having, he allowed us to bring the car back up here from Florida to do some work on it and store it for him. So we're going to do some videos on this car. Uh, right now we're going to get it uh, jacked up and put on jack stands, uh, get the wheels and tires off of it, and start a little bit of work on it. And we're going to take you all along with us here as we uh, finish this car for a uh, customer of ours. <music> how the suspension sags and how I've got it jacked up um, but yeah we're gonna do a quick once over of the car real quick uh, we'll come up here and look in the engine bay and then we'll explain what we've got to do to the car to finish it so <clears throat> we built this car last year and or no year before last I'm sorry and like I said we found it and it was just a rolling chassis no engine no transmission but it had the brakes had a lot of the wiring not a whole lot of plumbing so we had to make lines um, and get all that put in it had the radiator and so we just started from scratch kind of like we did 51 but this was kind of a test for us to put it together redid the whole paint and the body and the decals had a lot of damage on both sides just from where it had been moved around over the years this chassis is uh, chassis JR29 uh, I bought it with the intentions thinking that it could be a real Mark Martin car because it had the Jack Roush tag um, It had one of Mark's seats in it when we found it um, But it turns out after talking to some people that worked on the uh, 6 crew and the 16 crew back in the uh, the mid 90s when they were in Liberty, North Carolina Everyone was pretty much under the same uh, Or they came to the same conclusion that this was a, a originally a Ted Musgrave car The story I got was they probably retired it from Musgrave driving and uh, Roush wanted to give NASCAR 
something they could use as a display piece in their new NASCAR cafes in the late 90s. So they took the car, painted it like a Valvoline number six, and then presented it to NASCAR, and then they used it as a display piece. We bought it, and uh, like I said, when we stripped the paint, we really didn't see anything underneath it uh, that was telling one way or the other. I'm just going off what some of the crew guys said. I talked to Ben Leslie. Uh, he was a, a big part of that back then uh, in the mid-90s before he got on to Mark's crew. Uh, he believes that 29 was a Musgrave car as well. Uh, but in terms of the vehicle, it's very nice. It was in really good shape. So we picked it up. We got a correct C3 for it, which is in here um, now. We've got a brand new Jericho uh, Revision 4.2, I think, uh, transmission behind it. It's got the new uh, case and tail housing on it. Uh, it's got the uh, enclosed shifter housing on it as well. So that's a really nice piece. We ended up taking the rear end housing out of it, which is right here, and it, it was actually marked. You can see it there. Um, <clears throat> it was an oval rear end housing, so it had a little bit of positive camber on the left and negative on the right. We took a correct road course housing and put it in the rear. Uh, it's got correct road course springs and uh, shocks on it now. I haven't set the front geometry up in terms of the uppers and lowers. I didn't have time to before I sold it. Uh, we got it about 90% of the way done and a gentleman wanted to buy it at that point so we sold it and luckily had enough to fund 51. Uh, fast forward to now, he had some issues down in Florida with his house unfortunately uh, when the hurricanes came through. I reached out to him said hey you know I'd like to see the car again and we wouldn't mind having it back up here if we could help you in any way we will. So he was kind enough to send it up here to us. So here it is. We're going to try to finish it for him uh, the best we can. Uh, We've got a lot going on with JR51, with JR29, and we're also going to be restoring uh, one of Mark's cars that he raced at Hendrick, uh, chassis 5-538. It was his last win car in 2009. Uh, he also won another race in it too in 2009. So that is a big project that we've undertook, um, and I kind of agreed to do that before doing this. and. They kind of met up with each other in the same spot. We're limited on space here. We just have this decent two car garage that we've got. So we're gonna try to hammer out as much as we can with this car and then get it back to Rob, the current owner, um, which I'm sure he'll be happy with it once it's running and driving and he can get it moved around. But the only things we gotta do on this car is we've gotta finish plumbing the fuel system and all that entails was I ran the uh, A in line from the fuel cell up here to the engine and I need to put the ends on that A-in line, so I have to put a 90 degree A-in line up here on the, the still braided line, and then another 90 on the line in the back in the trunk of the fuel cell. I need to make a fuel line that goes from the fuel pump down here up to the carburetor here to the fuel log. Um, we need to attempt to bleed the brakes. Uh, the brakes on this car have an older style setup. It's a recirculating brake system. So the calipers on the front do not have standard bleeders on them. So back in the day, they had trouble with the brakes overheating a lot. And their way of remedying that was to constantly circulate the brake fluid in the system. In a normal braking system, you have fluid that's pressurized when you push the brake pedal and it's moved one way and then back, one way and then back. You know, brake down, you know, the pedal's down, brakes, the pedal's up and that fluid just stays in there and constantly moves back and forth like that. With a recirculating system, uh, when you push the brake, it feeds the fluid to the calipers to close or to move the pistons in on the pads, which close in on the rotors to stop the car. And then when you uh, let off, it circulates in a motion back up to the reservoir. So what it's doing, it's constantly circulating. So as you push the pedal, it just keeps moving that fluid in a big circle through the line. So to help with uh, the brake fret with brake fade and the fluid boiling back in the 90s that's how they remedy uh, remedied that problem nowadays you don't have that issue because we have better brake fluid and you don't need a recirculating system um, just because of the calipers being on the car the original of the car i want to keep it the way it is because it's original uh, 51 has a recirculating system on it uh, luckily it was still pressurized when we got the car um, the fluid was good in it so we just keep an eye on it and make sure that you know nothing leaks or anything like that. My truck that I had, it had a recirculating system on it too. And ironically, all three of these vehicles were made at Roush. The truck was a Roush truck. 51 was obviously built in uh, Roush's stable and so was this. So it was something they were doing. A lot of other teams did it too, but Roush was big on it. So we need to bleed the, uh, the, bleed, bleed the brakes. <clears throat> and then we got to bleed the clutch. It's got a brand new Quartermaster triple disc, seven and a quarter clutch. 
Um, we need to hook up the hydraulics for that and bleed them. Uh, the exhaust needs to go back under it. Uh, we've got some of that over here that we're going to try to make work. Um, let's see. And then I don't know what else it needs. Uh, I'll, I'll need to make a lower radiator hose. Um, we made one for 51. I had it made at an exhaust shop. I'll go through a video of how to do that kind of a simple and cheap way and it still work. That way you don't have to have anyone that knows how to TIG weld or if you don't want to learn how to TIG weld or anything like that, you don't have to use a nice piece of aluminum and weld it and make it work. Um, we are going to tr uh, try to change the carburetor out on it and it needs a fuel pump as well. Um, the issue I'm having now is the mechanical fuel pumps I normally use are out of stock everywhere and I can't find one. So I don't want to cheap out and buy a crappy fuel pump and have the diaphragm possibly rupture because when that happens you fill the crankcase full of fuel and it's just a, it's a headache you don't want to deal with. So I'm waiting um, for that to come in. I put one on order and I'm still waiting. I haven't ordered a carburetor yet because the ones that I normally use, they're on back order too. Uh, Rob's aware of this, so we're just kind of in a holding pattern, but we're gonna go ahead and start on everything we can do. We're gonna get that fuel line made. We're gonna make the line that goes to the fuel log to the pump, because even though the pump isn't in it, um, we can go ahead and make that line and uh, get it on there because we know where it needs to go and how long it has to be. We're going to get the exhaust put under it. Uh, we'll show how that works. Uh, we may have to go uh, to a friend's shop and have him do the exhaust. And then we'll tune it from there once we get it fired up. Um, we need to change the plugs on the distributor. If you watch the in-depth video of the history of GR51, you know that we had to swap these plugs on the wiring harness because the plugs on the distributor for the dual pickup look here they're also male as well so those aren't going to work now we know how to do it the right way because of the issues we had with 51 we'll need to change those over to a female uh, weather pack connector and then fill it full of fluids which I sent the car to him with fluids uh, fresh oil and all that to go with it we just never got it in it so we'll put all that in it and we'll get it going make sure there's no leaks and hopefully Rob can get it back um, in a reasonable amount of time and hopefully we've got everything done that he'll want so Y'all keep up with the progress. We'll upload as we go. This is the first video for JR29 and the work we're going to do to it. And uh, later on, we'll go a little bit more in depth on the car. But right now, we just wanted to get it up on jack stands and show y'all what we're dealing with. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we appreciate you watching.